I'm building up this motor troubleshooting trainer for the PLC lab, and I'm at the point that I need to do my control wiring for my motor starter setup. And I thought it'd be a good opportunity to hit the record button, and let's just talk through how do you wire a basic forward reversing motor starter. For this, we're going to use our green button for our forward motor starter. We're going to use our yellow button for our reverse motor starter. And we're going to use our red button for our stop. So start forward, start reverse, and stop. And then also on some lights so we can kind of talk this out in later videos. So I'm going to use a green light to say the forward starter is energized. We're going to use the yellow light to say the reverse starter is energized. And we're going to use the red light to say that our overload is ripped. All right, let's check out the wiring diagram and see exactly what we're going to be doing. So here's our example wiring diagram. And notice it says L1 and neutral up here. We're not going to do that. We're going to actually make these plus 24 volt and minus 24 volt. So we're going to take plus 24 volt to a normally closed stop switch. That way, whenever we press the stop button, that'll break that circuit. And then we're going to feed it to our forward push button, which is our green. And we're going to also feed it to our reverse push button, which is our yellow. And then we'll come back to this little lower branch in a second. But then we're going to feed that on over to the normally closed contact of our reverse to actually energize our forward contact. So if you recall from the video where we assembled the Snyder electric motor starter, there's a mechanical interlock in between the forward and reverse. That way one can't energize and then somebody energize the other one. It's not going to let that happen. We also want to electrically interlock these. So to do that, we need to feed the coal, our A1, of our forward contactor through the normally close of a reverse. Because that way, when they energize, that would break that. Now, what's really cool, if you recall, about this Snyder Electric reversing motor starter kit is they're gonna, they did some of this for us. So we already have a jumper on ours between this A1, which is that left side. And this normally closed right here. So this piece right here is already done for us. As is this piece right here. And then on the A2 side of it, there's also a jumper already going from our forward to our reverse. So this part of our wiring is already done. And if yours is not done on your setup, then you'll need to go ahead and install these. Let's go ahead and start at the beginning here. So we're going to start with plus 24 volt going to the normally close of our stop. So on our PLC trainers, the left set of terminal blocks are the plus 24 volt and the right set are the minus 24 volt. I'm going to run this up and around this way. Just give me a little room. And we're going to put that into the normally close contact. Now the normally close usually say NC on it. And also, usually it'll have the red contact. And while the electrons don't mind whether you go up or down, I usually come into the top of the push button, and then we'll go out of the bottom of it. That takes care of this little piece right here. And on the other side, we need to feed the forward push button one side of our... Ooh, there's an error right there in this diagram. Uh, I never caught before. Mm -hmm. I just noticed uh, this right here should say reverse. So you want to talk about some really ugly writing, I'm just going to put right here reverse. Or I'm going to put R-E-V because, yeah, y'all don't need to see me brutally try to spell out reverse. But, yeah, that should not say forward right there. So we'll scratch that out. But, okay, we need to feed the forward push button. We need to feed one side of our normally open on our forward contactor. We need to feed our reverse push button. And we need to feed one side of our normally open on a reverse contactor. And here's where it can get really confusing on a wiring diagram compared to what we actually physically do in the field. Because looking at that, it looks like we would need to go from the forward push button, then over here to the normally open of the forward contactor. And then we need to come back over here to the reverse and then back over the reverse of that. 
But usually you want to try to lay it out in a semi-logical state. So while I could do that, it makes more sense for us to go from the bottom of this normally closed up to our normally open contact on button two, then our normally open contact on button one, and then we're going to come on around to the front of our trainer and we'll finish that up. We'll take a wire from the opposite side of that normally closed on our stop button, and then we're going to go up to the normally open on button two. Now we need a short wire from there, and we're going to go over to button one, and we'll go to the normally open of button one, and we're going to put another wire on it. And I'm going to make this a long wire because we're going to loop around and spin this trainer around. So on this, we've wired from that stop button, that forward contact, and we've also wired to a reverse button contact. So now we need to get to the normally open of both our forward and our reverse contact. Now, sometimes when you're trying to figure out where to do which one next, you kind of look at, okay, where's the next wire go? So we already have our jumper from A1 to a normally closed contact, and that is on the top here. So we're going to be coming out with a wire here on this normally closed, and we need to get it to the normally open of this contact. That means that it's going to be the cleanest for us to wire the wire that's coming from our stop to the top of our normally open of each of these. We're going to take that wire and I'm going to connect it to our left normally open contact along with another wire. And we'll take that other wire to the normally open of our right contactor and that'll take care of this wire right here and this wire right here. And you notice how I'm highlighting these on this diagram for this video? I do this typically um, when I'm wiring a panel. Now, I don't do it on the screen. I just have a regular highlighter and I highlight every wire as a wire. And you'll find that that can save you a ton of time. Okay, so now on the opposite side of that, that wire, one, needs to go to the forward push button. It needs to go to the forward contact, and it also needs to go to that reverse contact. So what I want to do now is I want to take care of this jumper wire right here. So we're going to go from our reverse's normally closed contact to our forward's normally open contact. And the way we wired it, that means that these are available on the bottom. Now, be really careful. We're not going from the normally open here to the normally closed here. We're going from the normally open here to the normally closed here. And we're going from the normally closed here. And we're going from the normally open here to the normally closed here. So I just to make my life a little easier for now, I am actually going to take this overload loose. Now, if you do this, make sure you remember to retorque it when you're done, but that'll make it a little easier to see on the video. I'm going to go from the normally open on the left contactor, and I'm going to take it to the normally closed on this right contactor. And then I'm going to go from the normally open on my right contact, and we're going to take it to the normally closed on our left contact. And looking back at our diagram, that means that we have taken care of this piece right in here. And this piece right in here. So on that same circuit, we need to grab... And our forward and reverse push buttons. Also, that should say push button right there. Oh, tell you what, I, I chose a really bad diagram to uh, <laughs> to use it as an example. But hey, uh, well, you can watch my ugly artwork again. We'll put kind of push button there. So I'm going to take a wire just because I think this is the easiest spot. We're going to take a wire and we're going to a second wire. We're going to connect it to the reverse is normally open contact and the forward's normally open contact. Two separate wires in addition to what we already have. So here's our forward normally open contact. 
And then this one is going to be on our reverse, normally up in contact. And I didn't choose well on this one. I put this wire in the right side. Should be the left side. That way it had a little more room for this wire. So we're going to scoot that one over. That way we have room to put this one in and it'll keep it a little neater. All right, now we're going to spin our trailer back around. We're going to make sure you know which one's forward and which one's reverse. But I have the forward normally open one in my hand. And so it's going to go to the bottom of our normally open forward contact. Go right, hold on. Now I'm going to take the normally open of the reverse contact, and it's going to go to the bottom side of our reverse push button. So that's going to take care of this little piece of wiring right here and this little piece of wiring right here. So next we need to wire this light. And you know it's showing it go all the way over here, but I don't believe it should do that. I, I believe that really this should go right there and right there. And that should not be there. So that's what we're going to actually do on this one. So I'm going to take a wire from one side of our green light and a second wire from one side of our yellow light. And then we'll spin, spin our trainer around again. And in the case of these lights, polarity doesn't matter. So I'm going to take the, put, put the wires on the left side of these and I'll leave the right side for the minus. going to take the white one wire and it's going to go to the A1 terminal on the top of our reversing starter. And then we will take light two's wire and it's going to go to the A1 terminal on our reversing side. So that will take care of this little piece right here to the light, and this little piece right here to the light. Okay, now let's talk about something really important. This may be the most overlooked thing that I see on systems, and that is this overcurrent protection right here. In fact, this is worth enough time that we're going to spend a couple minutes with a meter on this, just so we make sure we understand what I'm saying here. So if I take my meter and I put it in continuity, on a manual motor starter. Now the manual motor starter takes care of your overload and your short circuit protect. So inside this little cover right here, there is a dial. And so here's where we would set our anchor load protection. And then it also has short circuit protection built in. And if I put my leads across it, then right now we have an open circuit. Now while I have them there, if I switch it on, then we have continuity. So when this hit, it breaks all three legs and kills the power to our motor. Now, on the bottom of this contactor, we have an overload. And so if I do the same thing on it, so if I touch it to the bottom of the overload and I touch it to the top of the overload, then you can't quite see the reading, but you heard the beep. We're going to beep. And if I hit the test button, this does not break this. So if you want to actually have overload protection, you've got to connect the normally closed contact of your overload. And this is incredibly important. I've seen six-digit panels with a whole row of overloads and not a single one of them having their auxiliaries hooked up. And I got a call from a customer and they're like, yeah, we're burning up motors left and right. And they look in there I'm like, yeah, I bet you are. So we wire up all the overloads. Well, then they're complaining because they're like, hey, these new these overloads that you wire, they're tripping all the time. I'm like, well, yeah, that's because somebody undersized all those motors. But yeah, without those, there is zero protection. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take a wire from our A2 overload, which we already have a jumper on the Schneider electric reversing kit, and we want to connect it to one side of our normally closed contact of this overload. And then the other side, we'll tuck around in the back and that'll go back to the minus for power supply. So now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna bolt this overload back on. I think that gets us where we'll main things I wanted you to be able to see good. And then I'm gonna take a wire 
from the other side of my overloads, normally close contact, and we'll tuck it to the back of our trainer, and I'm going to connect it to the minus of my power supply, which is the right set of terminal block. And that's going to take care of this little piece of wiring right here. And what that leaves us with is the other side of our lights. And both of those need to go to the minus 24 volt power supply. And I actually need to pick up light three too. So I'm going to start with my jumper on light three. So I'm going to take a wire, connect it, one to light three. And then in light two, I'm going to put both of my wires in. I will be jumper it right on over here. And then I'll connect it to light one along with an additional wire. And this wire will also go to the minus of our power supply. And so that will take care of this little piece of wire right here. Going up to here. This little piece of wire right here. And then going on up to here. And also while we're at it, we went ahead and picked up our red lights side there. And so what I want my red light to do, and yes, <laughs> I was in a hurry trying to make these diagrams for this, and I'm seeing now I should have spent more time on it. This is not our reverse. That is our overloads, normally open contact. So we're going to take a wire from light three to the normally open contact on that overload. So I'll connect a wire on light three. And I'll plug it around to the front of the trainer. Then we'll connect it to one side of our normally open contact. And then we'll take a wire from the other side of the overload's normally open contact. Tuck it back through our trainer. And then it'll go up to the plus 24 volt on our trainer, which is the left set of terminal block. Now well, the fun part, seeing what actually works and what doesn't work. And if we press our green button, our contactor on the left side energized, and we have a green light to let us know that it energized. And if we press our red button, it drops out. We press our yellow button, and the one on the right side energizes. And we press our red button, and it drops out. So that means forward and reverse works now. So that we didn't have to actually have three phase on this one, we're just using the drive as power. But if we look in here, I'm gonna press the start button on this. Now, while we're generating a signal for the drive to run, we're not actually going anywhere because it's gotta go through this. And we'll slow it down that way. Hopefully you can see when I press the green button, we should be able to see a little fan in here. Oh, and we didn't get a fan because I forgot to introduce my manual motor starter. So we're going to switch that on. And then when I press the green button, all right, we see it is rotating clockwise. Now I press the yellow button, and it rotates counterclockwise. All right, next, I'm going to wire up my brakes, because this is what this trader is really for is, how do you troubleshoot a motor? How do you mega a motor? How do we, you know, what do we test do we need to learn how to do? And so I've created this playlist right here that includes that video. 